Hello, I'm Lewis. Um, if you're watching this, you're probably a friend, family or colleague, but if you're not a friend, family or colleague, uh, I'm a property developer from Cambridge and we've just bought numbers eight and nine Liverpool Terrace. They're two six storey, well, one six, one's a five storey Georgian townhouse set in the centre of Worthing in West Sussex. The sea's over there. And I thought it would be nice to take a guided video tour of the two houses to show people what we've bought, what we're doing and uh, yeah, hope you like it. So first of all, we're gonna start in the lower ground floor. Number eight is set over six floors. Number nine is set over five floors. And the aim is to restore them back into two townhouses as they were originally built. We've got an external staircase currently accessing the lower ground floor, but we're gonna put the staircase back on the inside of the building. In the first room you come to the lower ground floor will technically be a cinema room. Uh, I use that term lightly because the cinema room is a recess for a television with a plug socket over there. But you get the gist and the feel of the size of the rooms. The reason we put the cinema on the lower ground floor is daylight, as you can see, is, is less than the main building. And to be honest, we ran out of naming rooms because there's so many. So this will be the cinema. The staircase will rise from here up into the main house and then to the rear of the property there will be a playroom coming onto the back. French doors which will open out into the rear courtyard which as you can see we've not actually walked into yet because there's no door into it but over time doors will get put in. Playroom here leading out into the rear. And then if you follow through to the very back, it's kind of dark, so I'm not sure if you can even make stuff out, but this will be the utility room. Um. Working our way back up to the main street, we've also got, which is kind of cool, four underground coal cellars, or vaults I think as they were known, where the coal was originally tipped from the pavement down into the cellar underneath, and we've got four of these running along this way and the aim is eventually to clear them out and, and to try and do something useful with them. As you can see somebody's carved a hole into the one next door but they're kind of full of junk at the moment and crawling around in this dark cave is not the most fun so it's on the to-do list but yeah might be some useful space somewhere later down the line. These stairs we're going to remove and ultimately access will just be from the main house um, these we've considered keeping them or replacing them, but if it's going to be one house, it seems unnecessary to keep them here. And then this area under here, we can then turn into a little enclosed courtyard of some description, but visually it just make the whole site look a bit nicer, not having the wooden stairs. And as you can see, there's some lovely details on the building. It's got the original ironwork railings which we're going to again restore back to how they originally were intended. Lovely front door, absolutely tremendous size on it. And again, because it was offices, four letter boxes, fill them up. Beautiful door furniture going back on. Um, but yeah, that's again a work in progress, but you can just see the scale and the size of the rooms and the proportions. It's a, it's a good sized building. Right. Through into the main hallway on the ground floor. Again, restore, restore, restore. We're intending on keeping the original handrail, original staircase. We're going to have brass stair runners made for the carpet to whip up the middle there. But again, this is all several months off. Immediately to the right, as you enter through the front door, you've got what will be the daytime living room. Uh, so again, great ceiling heights, I think the 3.6 metre ceiling heights, some original plasterwork left, but mainly this room was butchered back in the 1980s. Um, you can just about make out the line where the ceiling was, it had a fa false suspended ceiling, um, which we then had to take down. Um, and unfortunately the people who owned the building before decided to nail several thousand times pieces of wood into the ceiling which we're now very carefully having to remove so that we don't hurt the original plasterwork or ceiling underneath. Um, fireplace will be going back in. We uncovered that. The aim is to have gas fires down 
on the ground floor and up on the first floor. Um, again, I need to source fireplaces for that so that we get something nice in there to, to do the building proud. Um, window wise at the front, every window in the building, every window and every door um, needs to be restored at fairly horrific expense. Um, and again, under here, you've got the panelled shutters, um, which we're going to unpick the paint from and then restore. Um, when we bought the property a few weeks ago, there was a sub partition wall in here, so the two rooms were separate from one another. Um, again, we're trying to return the building to its original layout, original form, so we've opened this back up as it should be. Um, luckily, we've managed to keep some of the detailed architrave and woodwork, so again, we'll restore it and keep it if we can. Um, this room to the rear, we're going to put hopefully some bifolding doors across here um, and then this will be a home office um, for whoever moves into the property later and from up here you get a better view of the prison yard stroke courtyard stroke garden um, it's a bit of a mess but that belongs to this property which we've got here um, and then the blob at the back the person that sold us the site they've retained that and they're going to be turning it into a I think a one or a two bed little self-contained cottage. So, yeah, right. Um, moving on, still on the ground floor, moving to the rear of the building. The staircase I mentioned, which will be coming up from the lower ground floor, will ultimately come up under this set of stairs and enter into the main house here. We've got a staircase person coming in a couple of days to get that all sorted out. And then in the very rear, there will be a, technically an ensuite stroke shower room for if anybody wanted to use the bed or the office as a bedroom, you're then going to have a shower here, a sliding pocket door, because obviously it's banging into people if it was left as it was. And then this wall here will be removed and then that will go through and round into a toilet element as well so you're going to have a toilet shower and sink to the rear on the ground floor and right the joy of this house I haven't counted them completely but I think there's approximately a hundred and something stairs from the bottom right to the top um, so if you follow me if you want you can count as you go but I've given up many months ago and if you look all the way up you can see right to the top of the building which is uh, quite saddening when you're trying to remove building materials on the way up if there's anything of interest I'll point out or mention, the first one being 10 bags of plaster which I uh, thought was a great deal at a pound a bag, um, if anybody's interested don't buy about to expire bags of plaster because you basically buy them, drive them for two hours in a car, put them in the house and then the plasterer says they don't like them and they won't use them so the joy of that is we're now going to pay for a skip to then remove the things that we've driven for two hours to get here. Um, and even more annoying is plaster has to go in a special skip, so you have to get a special skip for my brand new unopened plaster. So yeah, some lessons to be learned along the way, I'll try and um, tell you where I can. So you've got a half landing and then up to the first floor, and the aim of this was to make the first floor accommodation the heart of the home as it were, or the hub. So in effect you're going to have two floors below of living accommodation, this floor is the heart of the house, and then you've got three floors of bedroom space above. Um, so yeah, if you follow me, and this room really is a stunning space. Again, original plaster work. When I show you through number nine next door, that's a far better example of having the original plaster work. Um, but this has still got some redeeming features. You've got the panel shuttered French doors opening out onto the balcony. And I'll take you out there and show you what what the view is to the front of the property. But just, yeah, good spaces, good proportions. Um, and again, when we bought the site, this wall wasn't here. Well, no, sorry, this wall was here. That was a door there. That wasn't a door. And there was a corridor running down here, false ceilings, water tank. So in effect, this space will be, it looks as it probably would imagine you'd expect it to be. It didn't look like this four weeks ago when we took the site on. Um, and again, as you can see, this will be the kitchen. Ordinarily, I wouldn't be putting kitchens in houses where they were months off completion, 
but the kitchen supplier which we use basically said you're having a kitchen in three weeks or you're having a kitchen in seven months. So this was a very, very rapid attempt at plastering, plumbing, getting the wires in because we had to get the kitchen in rapidly or we weren't having a kitchen. But as you can see, appliances are missing. They'll all come in a good time. Again, they end up getting damaged, scratched. So the logic was either leave them in a box or don't put them in. Um, but again, lovely space. Uh, dishwasher will be down there. Um, useful storage bins for recycling. Fridge freezer goes over here. So that will be there. Again, these seats aren't staying here in case you're thinking I've lost the plot. You'll have barstool, barstool, barstool. Factory enamel reclaimed lights, pop, pop, pop across the top there. And again, windows, we've got a restoration company. All of these sashes will literally be removed from the building, rotten wood taken out, sanded back and made good, because as you can see, they've taken a beating. Uh, interesting fact, in case anybody's wondering, uh, the smash pane there was a flock of pigeons that decided to move into the property when we took ownership um, and trying to chase pigeons out of the house. The pigeon's wing uh, overpowered the 200 year old pane of glass. So it's about three or four of those now where pigeons have smashed out bits of window but the pigeons come out all right and fly off into the distance to generally return 12 hours later and repeat the procedure. But Beautiful original fireplace. Now again, we're going to have gas piped into that, so that will be working. Ideally, I would have left it so that um, it was burning wood or coal, but due to the age of the building and its flammability, my logic was put it on gas. Um, again, this will have a sprinkler system from top to bottom and a commercial grade smoke alarm system for the reason of its six floors and fire escape and making sure you do the right thing there is, is important. Um, what else is fun? Ah, as I mentioned downstairs, lovely front door. Um, because I'm me, before we even took ownership, I'd bought hundreds of pounds worth of beautiful door furniture based things. But again, we'll either fit these fairly soon or they'll stay in a box until somebody steals them or I lose them. So that's that. Um, and in this space, you'll have your kitchen area in there. This will be a kind of daytime living room where you can then talk to people in the kitchen and then there'll be a dining table on this side so in effect you'd spend the majority of your day in this room for the reasons being of outside. Right, so if you come out onto the, the balcony, this is east facing so you get the morning sunshine in through the front, it then goes over the ocean and then sets to the rear, um, but you've got a beautiful little park down there. Um, the houses, I believe, built in 1825. Um, they were meant to be a kind of square of them, as it were, um, but in effect, they ended up building one strip. And the ones across the way, albeit they look the same, they were built in the 1980s and they're kind of replicas of the house over on, on the east side. Um, and the joy of this building is, if you have a look over that way, You've got a big Ferris wheel that has about seven to eight people a week go on it. Uh, and behind that, if you can even make it out, there's some water, which is the English Channel. But it's nice, and in my mind, because the garden space is restricted, to have this courtyard up on the first floor is a, is a wonderful thing for the reason that you can sit here, look at the sea, and you're not gonna get attacked by the homeless people that seem to like hanging out in the park from about eight in the morning till two in the morning. Um, so yeah, lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, and again, if you look up, you can see the scale and the height of this thing, it's, it's, it's fairly big. Um, but again, it's just more rooms to strip wallpaper from and more wires to buy. But, follow me, original doors again. Any doors we took out, we tried to relocate them, reuse them. Um, and again, once these have had a lot of love and new hinges and really had some time spent on them, they should come up looking looking really quite nice. And right. Ah, interesting fact. This, the person I bought the property from um, actually owned four of these buildings um, and they were all interconnected. So four in a row, you could walk through them all. Um, I believe they were offices of, a, of another property developer. Um, and the two I've got, have, we're now snipping them off so that you can't access the ones which um, 
shouldn't be there. But you've got a big metal tube. This was a roller door, and I think if a building caught fire, you pulled it down, and in effect, that would uh, shut the buildings off from one another. But as you can imagine, that big red sausage in the sky, uh, I'm still of trying to work out how to remove giant steel roller tubes, but um, yeah, that's one for another day. But for as long as I've got fun jobs I can be doing elsewhere, things like that I just put in my mind and we'll deal with probably at the last minute. Um, radiator wise, this is what we're gonna be putting back into the house. The big cast iron radiators, which I can't even begin to explain the, the weight of. I think that thing took four or five proper trades when to shuffle it out into this room. But again, because of the type of building, the radiators that go back in need to be matching with the period of the building. Um, but again, it's I think seven or eight thousand pounds for the radiators alone, just because you have to put what's right back in. Nice, follow me up. Um, you may be of two minds about this stuff, this lower level wallpaper. Uh, it's technical name I think is Anaglypta. Um, I actually, believe it or not, quite like it, so what I did was I managed to match it, um, found a supplier that still sells it, and I've now bought the matching pattern, so that as opposed to ripping it all off and throwing it away, we can patch it in, repair it, and in effect, it, I think once painted a nice colour should probably not look too offensive. Up on the half landing, this is our, our, our facilities, um, we've got a wee policy in this one, Poo next door, as you can imagine, um, it's not, not, not the best of situations, but um, it is what it is. Um, if anyone wants a drink, this is a cafeteria, so you've got your, you've got your water hose, you can make a nice cup of tea from your water hose um, any, any time, 24 hours a day. And again, this, this landing actually behind you here, because of the size of the house, um, it's going to have two heating systems and two wiring systems. So. We're going to build a giant, big, beautiful kind of larder cupboards in here, and then you're going to have one of the two boilers, one of the two heating systems, and one of the two wiring systems in here. Um, again, the scale of it means that you need to have lots of plants and lots of um, different services that need to be hidden away. So this window here, scabby window, again, you can see on them I've written replace. This is going to be gone. This is just going to be completely removed. Um, this one to the side we're going to restore. Um, again, probably leave this frosted for the reason being it's not overly pretty down there and if they're already frosted, just um, keep what's there. The bottom three floors, as you've just seen, will all be living accommodation. So in effect, you'd spend most of the time on the floor you've just seen and then you'd go down, obviously, for, for living in the day. And then we're now gonna do the top three floors, which are the, the bedroom accommodation. And again, it would have been very easy to either squash six, seven, eight bedrooms into this place, or have two or three bedrooms. The logic was, commercially, it needs to have a good balance of living and bedroom accommodation. So we're gonna have five bedrooms over this building. Um, the first bedroom is this, which is currently used as a tool and material store, but it gives you, again, an idea of the proportions. Uh, the aim is, again, we put the plugs in. Bed will sit along here. The size of the bedroom, I think it will need big bits of furniture, various sofas and rugs and what have you, but again, bed will be here. Fireplace, probably keep and restore that as best we can. It's not the best example, but it's already there and the cost and annoyance of replacing it is, is somewhat pretty bad. Um, and then coming through this way, this will become the ensuite for this bedroom. So, yeah, as far as bathrooms go, it's fairly cavernous. Um, Psychologically and mentally, what I like to do is make templates of anything that's going to go into the room so that when you walk in here, you can visualise quite quickly as to what goes where. Um, so in effect, you'll have a double sink here with wall lights coming out here and here with a mirror in the middle. You'll have a toilet over here, a shower over here. So this was the original door. So you can see there was a wall here with another door going into this room. We're going to seal this shut and then have a shower cubicle here. And then last but not least, just down there where you're standing, you're going to have a roll top bath, floor standing taps, so that you'll then have a bath, a shower, toilet and a sink. 
um, with about six metres between each object so you can yeah, enjoy the space I suppose. And again to the rear, you've got a nice selection of 1960s, 70s and 80s car parks. If you like looking at air conditioning units, this is a, this is a house for you at the back anyway. Um, but again, you're high up and you've got sea view, you've got um, daylight, so it's, it's, it's not all bad. What more, what more? Um, yeah, on to the next floor. So again, the door for this room will be here, that's going to go back in. And then, well, another landing. Uh, this landing remain as it is. So again, you can see we've made a start, the plumbers have been in. Um, a lot of the old plaster work, if you don't know, this is what's called lath and plaster. 200 years ago, they got skinny wooden sticks, some poor person had to smack them all in, and then they got horsehair and lime plaster, and basically over time and years of abuse, lots of this is now blown and starting to be removed. So what we're trying to do is save what we can but if we can't save it, we're then having to, to repair, obviously. Um, and I'll show you some of the plaster work upstairs, which is seen better days for sure. So that was the first floor of bedroom. So that was one bedroom down there. And then on the fifth floor, this will be the fifth floor, we then have two doubles and a bedroom, uh, bathroom, sorry. So again, good sized room. I believe the bed in this room is going to go here. TV points and etc. are over there. These walls were originally here, um, but unfortunately they were made with asbestos, so we had to pay three or four thousand pounds to have the asbestos removal people come, take this all out, and now we're now reboarding and replastering um, just to make sure the asbestos is gone. And the original access for this room several decades ago was through here um, but again because these doorways are in situ because they've been there for maybe 60 70 80 years our logic was leave these as they are just to not create extra work so that in effect bedroom two moving through into bedroom three almost identical in size to the one we've just seen um, again fireplace restore it this was the walkway through to number nine, but again we've blocked it off. Um, but because we have no electricity in number eight, what we've done is we've put power lead through from next door, um, which gives us our, our, our power to this site. But again, nice nice room, lots of the plaster in here is, is really kind of sagging and needs a lot of love, but once you strip the wallpaper off, you can try and gauge what you're working with underneath and, and then the, the annoyance of what you're going to have to do to repair it. And then these two bedrooms here and here will be served via this bathroom. Again, got a template system, toilet going here, sink going there, what appears to be a slightly oversized shower tray template here and a bath over there. This fireplace here is beyond acceptable, so we're going to be removing that. Again, reinstate an original uh, Georgian one if we can find one for the right money. Um, again, some of the windows have taken such a kick in all their sagging and decayed. Um, we're going to be getting them remade. Um, but again, because of the listed status of the building, all of the detail regarding the windows has to be exactly the same as they were when from the windows we removed. Um, Again, keeping things simple, what we're trying to do, keep toilets where they were, the soil pipes for the toilets and all the wastes run down the back corner here. So again, to make life easier, we haven't shuffled them around too much and we've left things so that you're not then covering the outside of the building with pipes or chopping through floor joists to, to make more, more access. And then the final floor, this is floor six, so the third floor of bedroom accommodation and if you have a look out the window you'll see the views get nicer and nicer to a certain degree as you go up and out of the 12 buildings on this terrace two of them have the sixth floor so uh, most of them are one floor less than this so this is a bonus floor that's in the loft as it were um, when we came here this was just one big room 
Uh, again, it was too big to have as one bedroom, so what we've done, if you follow me, and when I say what we stroke I've done, it's carpenters and paid professionals, so don't think that any of this was actually my doing. Uh, so the one big space, chopped it down the middle, bed's gonna go here. Again, you can see we mark things on, so when the electricians come, you'll have a bed here, TV, internet points and uh, power over there. But again, even for the top floor, lovely ceiling height. Really good ceiling height, which is a, a nice feature, especially in the loft, because normally they're quite enclosed. Um, but again, up on the top floor, it's slightly misty today, but you can see over to Brighton, you can see the South Downs, um, and from the other bedroom, you've got a lovely view of the sea as well. So, floorboard wise throughout the property, um, a lot of them have been so butchered and molested over the years. What we're going to do is, is, is kind of ply over them and carpet over them. Uh, with the exception of the ground and first floor where we're going to uh, sand and restore them. Which again, I can get onto later of how to do that. That's a fairly soul destroying job. As you can see, this room is an almost identical facsimile of the one to the other side. Um, again, it's just balancing the space out. If you've got room for the doubles, try and keep them as they are. This one's got a recess here where you could put wardrobes, desks, or other such things. And if I open the window, there you go. Yeah. It's kind of sunny and misty, so you can't quite make it out, but you can see, you see in the spinny wheel over there. Finally, the last room um, is the bathroom servicing both of these bedrooms. So each floor will have one or thereabouts bathrooms on it, so you're not travelling between floors um, to use the showers or the toilets. Um, so we're in effect, again, chop the big space, wall in here. This is now going to be the bathroom for these two bedrooms. Um, you're going to have a bath here with a shower over. Um, no, sh oh yeah, sorry, yeah, bath shower over here, um, sink there, toilet there. Ooh, that's dangerous. Um, sash window is going to be getting rebuilt. Um, it's kind of a bit dangerous at the moment, it's a bit wibbly and at risk of falling out of. Hey, see the pigeons go, there, thousands of them. They love it. Um, again, views out over there, which is quite pleasant, so. It's good to see. But yeah, fundamentally this is number eight Liverpool Terrace. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. It just seemed a better way of showing people what I'm doing and what my job is as opposed to still images. Um, hope you agree and uh, yeah, any more time we get, we'll try and make some more as we go along, but hope you enjoyed watching it, uh, what you've seen so far. Yeah.